This past Wednesday, during the Ash Wednesday service, we started a series on the pursuit of holiness, and we continue it today with readings from Leviticus as well as Ezekiel. And the most basic definition of holiness, the most basic definition is to be set apart. God is holy. God is set apart. God is not like anyone or anything else. And God's people are also called to be holy. Gulp. (laughs) We are called to be set apart, to not be like everyone else. You know, oftentimes we get a little nervous when the topic of holiness comes up because it may have been used against us or it may have been presented as an unimportant part of the spiritual life. And I'm referring to holiness in terms of a conservative liberal divide. And I want to mention problems with both approaches, the typical conservative approach, the typical liberal approach, and suggest a different way for MCCLV to explore holiness. So conservative Christians tend to emphasize the exclusivity of holiness. And it would help if I would turn it on. Conservative Christians tend to emphasize the exclusivity of holiness. And while there is definitely an exclusive aspect to holiness, right? Because to be holy is to be what? Set apart. So there's an exclusive aspect to it. Uh, Some faith communities have arbitrarily declared holiness to be strictly limited to a certain group of people. Some people here in the sanctuary may have been told in subtle ways or in more obvious ways that they could only be holy if they embraced certain behaviors or believed in a certain way. And so there are problems with this approach. People can too easily be excluded, and it puts too much power in the hands of leaders, not enough power with our God. Now, some people here may have more of a background in liberal Christianity where the boundaries are wider. You know, hey, believe what you want to believe. Do justice work, serve people in need, proclaim equality, and let holiness work itself out at some point. Whatever. Who cares? And the problem with this approach is that holiness is too important to leave it hanging out there. Holiness is not something that individuals and communities just sort of randomly pay attention to. It takes focus. It takes study. It takes commitment. So we do not want holiness to be used as a weapon by faith groups. Amen. We don't want it to be used as a weapon. But we also do not want holiness to be ignored. And so the approach that we're going to take at MCCLV is that holiness is a journey. We're going to take a long look at holiness. We're going to reflect on it. We're going to consider it. We're going to look at ways to open ourselves uh, to God's holiness, working through us individually as well as a community of faith. Holiness informs our justice work. It makes it deeper. Holiness informs our relationships in the church. It informs our relationships outside of the church, making them deeper also. You know, if holiness is leading to the exclusion or expulsion of people, it's best to stop that train. But if holiness is leading to the growth of people, all praise be to God. Holiness is life-changing, and developing holiness will impact our lives in a positive way. By the way, no one has holiness all figured out. We're all in development. We are today and forever God's projects in development. Amen? Yes, we're all in development. There's no guilt or shame on the path to holiness. We're going to get it sometimes. Sometimes we're not going to get it. We're all trying to understand it. Now, if you know someone pursuing holiness right now in their lives, you know how great it is to be around that person. When I'm around someone who's on a focused path to holiness, I just want to spend as much time as possible with that person. I want to soak up that great energy. I don't want it to end. I don't want to be around people who consider themselves to be holy. Instead, I want to be around people who desire to be holy. Remember, holiness, it's not a destination. It is a journey. 
So we do not pursue holiness to get recognition. We do not pursue holiness to gain additional income. We do not pursue holiness to get into heaven or to become better than others. Holiness makes us different than others. It doesn't make us better than others. Okay? So we pursue holiness because we no longer want to be like everyone else. We want to give over more of our lives to God. We want to set apart more of our lives for God. So throughout Lent, we have this six-part series on holiness. And our scripture passages today are clear to name a difference between the holy and the common. And the reading from Leviticus today, God speaks to Aaron and gives him and his sons instructions about their job as priests. And first we hear that they are to be sober in their work. They are to avoid wine and strong drink. If they indulge in wine or strong drink and enter into the sanctuary, they will die. They have polluted God's space, and so they will die. This is an unequivocal warning. It's to remind Aaron and his sons that the sanctuary is not like any other place. It is to be treated with the utmost of respect to even step foot into it. And then God says this, you are to distinguish between the holy and the common, between the clean and the unclean. And those words, holy, common, clean, unclean, they describe the status of every object, place, or person. Everything has a compartment in the ancient spiritual system. And the book of Leviticus is all about listing out the holy, the common, the clean, and the unclean. And why bother with all of this? Well, the writers of Leviticus have as their utmost concern the well-being of God, protecting the status of God. And for the writers of Leviticus, people mess with God if they mix up those categories of holy and common. So what matters the most is being able to count on the presence of God, to enjoy God and to not let anything get in the way of God. People relied on these boundaries between the holy and the common to help them understand the power of God and to approach God with reverence. Now the prophet Ezekiel seems to be in quite a bad mood for today's reading, right? For Ezekiel, everything in the community of Israel had turned corrupt. The political leaders, they are called princes. They are corrupt. They've taken advantage of people financially. The other officials also corrupt. They've used violence to get their way, to make money. The prophets are corrupt, saying that God has spoken when God has not spoken. The people are corrupt, taking advantage of the poor and extorting immigrants. But surely the priests are okay. Right? The priests represent God to the people. They lead the people in their spiritual lives. So they really have to be on the side of purity over corruption. Surely the priests are okay. Uh-uh. Uh, the priests are also corrupt, according to Ezekiel. They have profaned the holy things of God. The, the priests have taken the holy things and turned them into a profanity. Anything else that the priests have done? Well, they've made no distinction between the holy and the common. Anything else? Well, they haven't taught the difference between the clean and the unclean. Anything else? Well, the priests have, have disregarded God's Sabbath. And so if we could all say together, uh-oh. <laughs> Ezekiel's message is rough. He's saying that everyone is off spiritually. No one is pleasing God. This was not a particularly popular message from Ezekiel. The political leaders, the officials, the prophets, the people, the priests, they are all going down a corrupt path. Now, just like in ancient times, we don't want this to happen today. We want to be holy. We don't want to be corrupt. Amen? We don't want to be profane. But how do we determine what God has made holy and then what's common and what's profane? There is a difference between ordinary things and holy things. There is a difference between common things and things set aside for God. And so today is a, a, propped, a prop day. Do we like props? <laughs> okay. So look at this beautiful pyramid made specifically for Holy Communion, right? Beautiful pyramid that we put on the communion table made with an orientation to God. So where are we going to put this? Holy, right, we're going to put this in the holy things. What about this? We have a tablecloth, a plastic 
picnic tablecloth found in the... Do I have these ones? Okay, good. <laughs> right? Something common, something every day, something that's not necessarily set aside for God. Wasn't blessed by a clergy person as far as I know. This is, is something that's common. And the profane is often the most fun, right? Church, right? Okay. So here we have a pyramid with an advertisement to go to Bob Smith's car lot. Right? That's a, this is a pro, right? To have a, a, a pyramid, an altar cloth with an advertisement on it, that's a profanity, right? So we'll, we'll put that in the profane box. Okay. How about this? A beautiful chalice. Does this look like it was made with an orientation to God? Yes, yeah, a beautiful, holy thing. And then we also have something here, uh, a coffee cup, just a mug from the, uh, the kitchen, MCCLV's kitchen. Common, thank you, a, a common thing. Now, what would be a profane thing? Well, it would be taking a chalice, you know, something blessed by, uh, it's blessed, and then you put like, you know, like a horrible thing. This is a profanity, right, to take a holy thing and to make it profane. So we're going to put that in the profane box there. Let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, we have, um, oh, it looks like we have anointing oil, blessed oil. Okay, holy, right. Used for blessing others, anointing the sick, sending people forth. And then we have, I just used it this past week, right? The, did, a, did a stir fry out in the kitchen. So this is something that's common, right? Olive oil, not blessed. You know, something that you use in the everyday. And then we have, again, anointing oil. It says pure, blessed olive oil and fragrance, but it says help your dry skin. So um, anointing oil used just for the purpose of moisturizer. That is a profanity, right? Um, because it's supposed to be used to bless others, to heal the sick. God's power is working through that. Okay, just a couple more things. What else do we have here? A beautiful cross. Made, yes, they're very good. <laughs> Holy. Made definitely with an orientation toward God, toward the divine. And then we have just sort of um, a garden tchotchke. Okay, is this a holy thing? As far as I know, not, it has not been blessed, so we put that in the common, uh, the common box, right? Um, and then um, we have a cross that has been profaned, right? Quite a profanity, a, a cross, a beautiful cross, and a rubber chicken. It's a terrible uh, profanity, right? Just one more, just one more example. We have a Bible. And it says the Holy Bible. <laughs> yes. Goes in our, yes, goes in our holy box. And then we have a novel. Anyone here read The Hours? Um, a novel, yeah. <laughs> Turned into a movie later on, uh, something that's common. And then I, I wasn't able to do this, but uh, let's pretend that this is a page of the Bible and it's turned into a paper airplane. The profanity, right? You can, you can feel it, right? It's a... It's a profanity, okay? So, as we heard in our readings today, the biggest problem is actually not with the profane. We know what is profane, right, church? We can spot it pretty easily. We hear profanity. We know what we are hearing. We see profanity. We know what we are seeing. The problem is mixing the holy and the common. If there's no distinction between the holy and the common, well, then what is the point of the holy? To mix the holy and the common for the ancient writers and for the ancient prophets was to not understand God's role, and it was to disrespect the divine. If something was not directed to God, it was common. It doesn't enter into the holiness zone. And to make the things of God common was to make... Who com God common. So to make the things of God common is to make God common. Was God common? <laughs> no. God is not common. And the issue persists today in our culture, right? In our culture, we don't want to make a big deal about anything. But God is a big deal. 
God is not common. God is holy. God is completely, totally, and utterly holy. So these were examples of objects or things or stuff. But there are other ways we may use these designations of holy, common, as well as profane. For instance, think about time. When it comes to time, holy time is time that's what? Time that's set apart for God. Time in worship. Time in prayer. Time when we're doing spiritual study. Common time would be time not specifically set aside for God. Laundry time. <laughs> Preparing for dinner. Just trying to get a task done. That's common time. And then there's profane time, which is taking time set apart for God and using it for something else, using it for self-promotion or gossip or, you know, any sort of long list of things. Think about conversation. We may designate conversation as holy conversation, common conversation, or profane conversation. Holy conversation is conversation directed to God. It's touched by God. Holy conversations happen when people invite God in to a dialogue. Common conversation is, is saying, you know, I had salad for lunch. What did you have for lunch? Or I paid three fifty-eight a gallon for gas. What did you pay for gas? It's a conversation that's not directed toward God. And then there's profane conversation. I don't really have to go into detail on, on that, do I? Okay. As we grow in holiness, we will want to set aside more and more of the world for God. As we grow in holiness, we're going to want to set aside more and more of our lives for God. And that journey to holiness, church, is a journey of reclamation. We re what we're doing is we're reclaiming parts of our lives for God. And they were already God's to start with. Yes. In the beginning, God created each of us. And as we became older, we often separated out more of our lives for ourselves, for our friends, for our work, for our families, for our hobbies, and God was often forgotten or purposely avoided. But no longer, as we grow in holiness, we reclaim those spaces and places and things and people for God. And it is an amazing journey, and it is increasingly uncommon. Pursuing holiness is not an ordinary path. It's quite extraordinary. Praise God. So let us pray. Make us holy, God. We want to be holy. We want to dedicate more of our world to you. We want to dedicate more of our lives to you. See our hearts and how we desire to set, us our, set ourselves apart for you. Continue to grow us and bless us along the journey we pray. Amen.